This conference will now be recorded. In last week's session, uh, we were discussing about uh, what is auto scaling group and uh, what is a launch configuration. And uh, what is scaling policies like that? So we created one auto scaling group last week. That auto scaling group is managing some servers as per the given, you know, auto scaling group size. While creating a group size, what is the minimum servers I have given? Minimum as two, maximum as five, maximum as five. So desired, desired will be based on the load. So what is the desired capacity as of now? Two. So this auto scaling policies, we have a scaling policies also here. When I created auto scaling, did I created some target tracking scaling policies based on the CPU? So here in this auto scaling group, if you see this auto scaling, do you have some policy here? Whenever the CPU utilization goes beyond 80%, then it will try to scale up, scale down. So this scaling policy will update the desired number. It will update the desired number for this auto scaling group based on the load. So whenever it has reaches some CPU utilization, does this auto scaling policy will update this desired capacity dynamically or programmatically in the background? Yes. So once the desired capacity is modified, once the desired capacity is modified, does auto scaling will try to match desired capacity with current instances? Suppose currently there are two instances. Desired is three. Desired is three. Does uh, there is a mismatch between current servers and desired servers? So does AWS auto scaling match desired capacity with current capacity? Yes. So it is using internally one more service called CloudWatch. It is using internally one more service called CloudWatch. CloudWatch is a monitoring and alerting service in AWS. It's a monitoring and alerting service in AWS. So to create this uh, scaling policies, do we need some data? Do we need some data? Do we need the metrics? To create these scaling policies, we need a matrix, data, the system metrics. What is the meaning of system metrics like CPU utilization, that network utilization, all those things. So in the background, in the background, who is gathering all these details? Basically, there is a CloudWatch. CloudWatch is one more service in AWS. It's a monitoring and alerting service. So this CloudWatch is one more service, this AWS CloudWatch. It's a one more service in AWS. This CloudWatch is monitoring that servers in the background. The moment I created a, you know, that auto scaling group with that scaling policy, it has created some alarms also. It has created some alarms also that uh, the moment I create an auto scaling group with that uh, target uh, tracking policy, it has created one alarm also that CloudWatch alarm. You can see there are two alarms here. One is when this alarm will be triggered, kind of a the CloudWatch will inform auto scaling. The CloudWatch will inform auto scaling that whatever threshold you have set, it is reached. So when this CloudWatch alarm will be triggered, whenever CPU utilization reaches, whenever CPU utilization reaches 80% for three consecutive times, for three consecutive times, which means three data points within three minutes. Suppose if CPU utilization is greater than 80% within three minutes, three times, this alarm will be triggered. When this alarm will be triggered, that scaling policy, will it update the desired number? This CloudWatch will inform scaling policy, scaling policy will update the desired number. 
and what is this it is already saying it is in alarm it is in alarm what is it means whenever cp utilization is less than this for you know this much for continuously 15 times within 15 minutes this alarm will be triggered this is to scale down suppose cp utilization is very less continuously 15 minutes with within 15 minutes 15 times this will be triggered if this is triggered does the target tracking policy which we have created in auto scaling will it reduce the desired number of servers if there is no load yes so this is how in the background the scaling will happen there is no magic there is no magic here everything is one software or application in the background which is managing all these things the cloud watch is gathering the data this alarm is looking after that data and uh, informing auto scaling groups when to scale up and how to scale up is everyone clear what is auto scaling in the background how scaling is happening these alarms will be auto created in the background if you are creating a target tracking policy if you want to create your own alarm you can do that if you want to create your own alarm create alarm right this is you can create which metric whether you want to use this ec2 metric for auto scaling group which one whether you want to use cp utilization you can create all these things on your own if you want to create your own alarm but this cloud watch is very big concept so i am not covering here this is part of a different program altogether but this cloud watch is basically monitoring service in aws using this cloud watch can we monitor our load balancer our ec2 servers like that if you see which service you want to monitor also when i am creating a service when i am creating a cloud watch alarm it is saying whether you want to monitor ec2 instance whether you want to look after efs or s3 or ebs cert manager like this it is showing so it's a monitoring and alerting service this will be internally used in this will be internally used in auto scaling group in the scaling policies now if you see desired is two desired is two minimum two desired is two now one of the server is down now i am intentionally stopping the server again is there a mismatch between desired servers and actual servers if one of the server is down i no need to stop the server even though if the tomcat is down the application is down because of your el health checks in auto scaling will it will be will it be considered as a failure even though server is run if the tomcat is down our application is not working does the auto scaling will consider that as a failure because we are using elb health checks let me show that this is one of the server created by so i am getting my response from those servers let's say i am getting a response from 10.0.77 this one this is managed by auto scaling this is managed by auto scaling i cannot directly sss to this one i cannot directly sss to this one because it's a private server so i will try to sssh via this jump box i will try to sss via this jump server first let me sss to that let me sss to that from here I have a PEM file, SSH, I, that PEM file, user. But here, if you see, it is showing as a root, but we cannot log in with root user. We cannot log in with root user. When I try to click on this connect, it is showing as a root. We cannot log in with root user. So instead of root user, can I say the default user of that EC2? Now I connected to this this uh sorry what it is saying
connection closed by 10.0.0 .0 .0 it's on 422 it is not allowed for some reason let's see this 422 this 422 security group 422 is opened 422 is opened for everywhere in the outbound outbound all traffic is opened Maybe something wrong with SSH service which is running in that one. Okay, for now let's leave it. Uh, SSH EC. Where is the typo? Oh, there are two at the reds. Huh? There are two at the reds. Okay. Yeah, now here I am in this machine. Now, if I just remove this application also, will it be considered as a failure? If I remove this one in the OPT, Tomcat 8, Web Apps folder, that var file, this Maven var file, if I remove this also, this application will be removed. Is ELB performing help this application, this application context? Yes. So in that case, will it be considered as a failure? Yes. Otherwise, if I stop the Tomcat also, will it be considered as a failure? If I stop the Tomcat also, let's say SH OPT Tomcat 8 bin shutdown.sh. I am stopping the Tomcat. Now let me come out of this machine. Tomcat is stopped. Load balancer will do its job. Since Tomcat is stopped, is load balancer still it is not identified that this is unhealthy because of sticky session because of sticky session it is trying to forward the traffic to same server we are getting 502 bad gateway after some time if the health check identified that this is failed does traffic will be shifted away from this one does elb will mark this machine as unhealthy whatever that is not working now yes but in the background does the auto scaling comes into picture does auto scaling comes into picture will it create one more server now based on the health checks based on the health checks will it create one more server here now elb has identified that this is unhealthy is elb is routing the traffic to another server now one more healthy server since i have two servers is EL is application is accessible from another server now? Yes. But in the background, this server, this is not working. This is not working now. 77. Does this server will be terminated? And will I get a one more server altogether? If you observe some based on the health checks, I'll get a one more server. I'm not doing anything. I'm just uh, look up, look at this one. If you just keep refreshing here. You just look after here. Now, do you see this one? It is saying pending, which means is that uh, started creating a new server now? Now, once this is ready, once this is ready, does this unhealthy server, will it be terminated by AWS auto scaling? Will it stop and terminate that server because there is no use of that server? Will it stop and terminate that server? Yes. So, if you see now, if I go to auto scaling groups, if I go to auto scaling groups, now desired capacity is two, currently three. Why it is three? One is unhealthy. So that's why it has created one more. But once that is ready, again, will that server will be terminated? The server which is not running healthy? Yes. Now go to this auto scaling group. Go to this auto scaling group and see the activity also. See the activity. 
go to auto scaling group and see the activity if you see here here when march 28th an instance was taken out of service in response to elb system health check failure since i stopped the tomcat is that instance is taken out of service from elb because that health check is failed on that server so again auto scaling is it launching new instance now is it launching new instance now an instance was started in response to the difference between desired and actual capacity so again if you see 759 it has identified that the service is not healthy that server is not healthy around 8 o'clock again within maybe one or two minutes is that new server started is a auto scaling created a new server in response to this failure now now here here i got one more server again how this server got created what is the input for this server what is the input for this server what ami what instance type again it was using same launch configuration so is this server automatically added to the target group because we integrated auto scaling with load balancer whatever server it has created by auto that that one can i see that server again this is getting terminated because of uh, not healthy this server is healthy again now someone was asking what about the data will be data will be copied before terminating to the old server data what data you are maintaining in that one it is stateless application so in your application the actual data will it be maintained or stored in application servers like tomcat no so you, your application servers will store and retrieve the data from where kind of a databases this is like a stateless application this is like a stateless application so you are not having any data in this one your application server will contact the database and from database it will read and write the data so you no need to worry about the data but if you are using auto scaling groups for if you are using auto scaling groups for database servers like a stateful applications do you need to use some mechanism to sync the data also with new server yes but here you no need to worry is everyone clear what is auto scaling how it works now once your practice is done if you terminate these servers the servers will be terminated permanently if you select this server select this server and if you click on stop or terminate will it be terminated permanently these two like this the way you guys are stopping and terminating will it terminate permanently if you do like this if i stop this servers will this servers will be terminated i mean to say are you not going to get another servers again one more no two more servers once your practice is done once your practice is done you want to delete permanently then what needs to be deleted guys what needs to be deleted you have to delete a auto scaling group you need to delete a auto scaling group otherwise if you don't want to create you no know, delete auto scaling group can i just update this desired number as zero and minimum as zero auto scaling group will be there but no servers can i go and update this auto scaling group saying that desired capacity zero minimum capacity zero auto scaling group will be there but servers won't be there but any time if required can i come and update this desired to minimum to again so this way also you can do that better you delete auto scaling group if you don't want to delete auto scaling 
can you play with this desired numbers and uh, minimum numbers like this as i told minimum zero desired also zero then currently there are two servers minimum zero desired zero so will it terminate those two servers auto scaling group will be there but it will terminate those two servers otherwise you delete auto scaling group if i delete auto scaling group does the servers will be deleted whatever servers are managed by the tato scaling not every server whatever servers are managed by the tato scaling will be deleted now now these two servers will be deleted whatever servers i have for the tato scaling it will be deleted if there are no servers available for your load balancer again will you get a response it will be terminating in some time if the servers are not there for your load balancer will you get a response from your application no so now 503 503 service temporarily unavailable because we don't have any servers in the background servers itself is not there this is how it works is everyone clear guys whatever services we discuss this elb auto scaling is very very important as a devops engineer we need to understand in the cloud how it works now let's continue with one more topic called iam iam what is iam So in AWS, there is a one more service called in AWS, there is a one more service called IAM. So what is this IAM? The full form of IAM is identity and access management. It's all about authentication and authorization it's all about permissions authentication and authorization authentication and authorization it's all about permissions it's like administration so who can do what within aws who can do what within AWS that depends on what that can be controlled or that can be controlled or that can be based on what who can do what within AWS that is depends on IAM just to make it simple you have a Jenkins you have a Jenkins Jenkins will be used by a lot of people like developers DevOps engineers all those things does everyone can do the same set of operations does everyone can perform same set of operations in Jenkins like developer, DevOps engineers like that? No. Are you, you know, are you restricting the access? Are you restricting the access for few people, few permissions only you are giving? So similarly here, similarly here, AWS. We have a AWS. You joined for one project. Does it mean? Every developer will have its own AWS account. Every DevOps engineer will have their own AWS account if you join some project. Suppose you joined for, let's say, you joined for some project like this, LIC India. This LIC India is using AWS. Just to give a overview, they are giving, they are using AWS cloud, which means they are hosting their applications in the AWS cloud. Let's say LIC has hired 100 developers LIC has hired 100 developers like 10 testers and five DevOps engineers like this I'm just giving an example they hired these many people like this which means does every developer will have their own AWS account to deploy their LIC applications does the testers will have their own AWS account? DevOps engineer will have their own AWS account? No. So it will be a same account. It will be a same account. Maybe like this. 
one account within this account let's say there are infrastructure engineers aws uh, admins or infrastructure team like this we have let's say so there will be one account is this account is common for all these guys the guys who is working for this project and if this project is using cloud like aws to manage and apply their applications is it common for all these guys it's common for all these guys so here does everyone will get same access level does everyone will have a same access level which means whatever aws administrators can do in that aws account does developers also can perform these same operations in that aws account is it allowed to do that first of all no so how can i manage access and permissions to these guys that is where this aws iam comes into picture here we created a aws account aws as of now everyone is logging in with what user is everyone is logging in with the root user that root account but in your actual projects in your actual projects the moment you join you no need to create a aws account already aws will be account will be there or azure account will be there or gcp account will be there are you going to get a root credentials for you to log in is a root credentials for you to log in no in fact no one will use root account no one will use root account who will use root account root account is used only for what purpose root account is used only for billing only for managing the bills are you going to use any root account to, to create any infrastructure no it's only used for managing the billing what is the managing the billing which means only to view the bills and pay the bills to the aws root account will be used then how others can access with their own credentials with their own credentials right with the help of iam with their own credentials they can access now in iam there are two things one is authentication one is authentication another one is authorization like any tool you take you take jenkins do you have this authentication and authorization concept in jenkins also you take nexus you take nexus in nexus also do you have this authentication and authorization concept in that respective tool if i take kubernetes also if i take kubernetes also kubernetes also has this concept in that kubernetes we call it as a rbac in kubernetes we can manage permissions to kubernetes using rbac so role based access control like this in aws also we have a authentication and authorization so what is authentication and what is authorization what is difference between authentication and authorization authentication is basically identity you need to prove that you are a valid user you need to prove that you are a valid user you are known to that system identity kind of a whether that user user exists in that system or whether that user known to the system that is identity authentication if that user is not known to the system or if that user doesn't exist in that system are we going to get like invalid user invalid user yes so if the if it is a valid user if that user known to the system if that user exist in the system then authentication will be successful but once authentication is done what is the next step authorization 
authorization authorization is nothing but permissions permissions whether that user is authorized to perform so and so operation so and so action whether that user is able to perform so and so operation or so and so action in jenkins you guys are already done to relate suppose you have not granted permissions to create a pipelines you just granted read only view read but he cannot delete and create or modify the pipelines let's say you have not granted the permissions user can access jenkins but if that user doesn't have permissions to delete create and modify the pipelines will he able to delete create modify the pipelines no but if you have granted execute permissions or read only permissions will he able to see how many pipelines are there if required can he run the pipeline can he run the pipeline yes that is authorization permission so in aws we can do that using iam in iam we have some concepts like this iam policies policies we have we have users we have groups we have roles we have roles and one more thing called identity provider identity provider which means iam users iam users directly users can be created in the aws like in the jenkins the way you create users directly in the jenkins similarly in aws also can i create a users using iam users yes but uh, if you observe any tool you take in your actual company you are using jenkins you are using nexus and you are using aws let's say are you going to have a different different usernames and passwords for all these tools or systems which you are using in the company no no because all these tools will be integrated all these tools will be integrated with what in the actual company in the actual projects all these tools will be integrated with what ldap ldap or active directory ldap ldap is a protocol lightweight data access protocol so every company will have a ldap what is this ldap it's a database kind of a database ldap or active directory it's kind of a database so what is this database what information will be there in this one it's kind of a employee database employees the guys who is working on that company if you remember if you are already working in it the moment you join in the company in the first day in the first day are they going to onboard you are they going to give one username to you and one default password on the day you join the day you join they are going to give one username and one password the moment you join in the company so what is happen in the background they created your details in the ldap they created your details in the ldap they are onboarded you to that company they created a details your details in that company ldap so they create a user your you in that ldap now i have a jenkins i have aws i have nexus these guys are using all these tools let's say this is my jenkins this is let's say aws account this is nexus now if all these tools are integrated with this elder if all these tools are integrated with elder does elder you know does these tools will contact elder for authentication whether that user exists in the system or not if all these tools are integrated with elder all these tools are integrated with elder let's say it will authenticate whether that user so, so jenkins will talk to ldap 
you are typing username and password here that username and password the jenkins will check with this ldap and see whether that user exists in or not if that user exists in the system will it allow you to log in yes if same ldap is already integrated in the nexus or you know aws or any other tool also can we use same credentials whatever credentials you are using to log into your office laptop or office desktop whatever credentials you are using to log into office laptop or office desktop can i use same credentials in all these tools if all these tools are integrated with organization ldap or active directory yes this authentication now if required in aws also using iam can i integrate with ldap this identity provider can i give my ldap details or active directory details in aws iam also so that does aws also can go and verify the users in your organization ldap the employee database of your company the employees like a testers developers q architects even ceo even ceo also the ceo details also will be part of that ldap of that organization yes so if required we can integrate that with here iam iam there is one service called iam manage access to the aws resources now if i go to iam here here identity providers is there users is there groups is there roles policies identity providers if i go to this identity provider here can i integrate with my identity provider the employee database that ldap or active directory by clicking on this add these are protocols open id connect or saml these are some protocols using these protocols can we integrate our identity providers here using your provider name if i want to use this open id connect i want to give that details here so using this we can integrate with ldap if this is integrated with ldap when i am accessing can i use my username and my password whatever i used to log into my system or any other tools yes that is only authentication but when it comes to authorization how authorization will happen how authorization will happen the authorization will happen based on the policies based on the policies attached to that users or groups based on the policies which is attached to that users or group so what is group in general what is group it's a group of users it's a group of users it's a group of users instead of managing permissions at each and every user level can i manage the permissions at a group level so i can add 100 users to that group and i can manage the permissions at a group level so whatever permissions i have granted to that group will it be applicable for all the users who are part of that group like development group De devops group admin group like that yes if you are already in it the moment you join in one new project the moment you join to some new project they are you know will they ask you to raise access to some groups will they ask you to create a tickets they will give the group name some group name they will ask you to raise a request to get added you to that group so if that group is already granted with some permissions will you get the permissions to do those operations if you are part of that group the moment you join any new project whether you are a developer or a devops guy or tester also will they ask you list of groups maybe your team lead or your manager will say 
raise a request to these groups your team lead or your manager will ask you to raise a request to the groups is groups are under distribution lists are, uh, no lists are same no group is different distribution list is different distribution list is just a dl your mail id will be part of that uh, dl so whatever mails they are sending to that dl you will also get the mail if you are part of that dl that is only for communication dl is dis different group is different now let's say i don't have any identity provider i am skipping this one now i am trying to explain with users iam users so if required can i create a user in aws directly the way you created a user in jenkins can i create a user in aws also like this but uh, this works for small scale companies this works for small scale companies but very big organizations this is not the way that's why we have a solution called ldap identity providers ldap active directory where they will onboard you now for now let me demonstrate with this one i can create a users like this for this users can i attach some policies directly to the users or i can attach these policies to the groups also what is policy here what is policy here policy is nothing but a specific permission specific permission to specific aws resource specific aws resource now resource or aws resource or aws service so can i call ec2 as one aws resource or service just to give an example ec2 elb auto scaling group like uh, vpc s3 eks ecr rds even iam also even iam also one service can i call all these things as a services like this yes specific permissions to specific aws resource permissions like read like create update delete read so if i just give read only permissions if i create a policy if i create a policy with read only permissions read only permission to ec2 so whoever has this policy attached will they able to create and delete ec2 instances if i create a policy read only permission with ec2 will they able to delete create ec2 instances who has that policy attached no suppose i create policy all the permissions for all aws resources kind of admins all policies all permissions for all aws resources can i call them as admins they can do everything in aws yes so these policies or permissions are basically specific permissions to specific aws resource here there are two types of policies one is aws managed and another one is customer managed another one is customer managed aws managed and customer managed now if i go to this policies here we have a policies here in iam if i go to this policies here here customer managed and aws managed so what is this aws managed does aws already have lot of predefined policies created for us does aws already have a lot of predefined policies created for us yes now if you see just to give an example just to give an example let me search with ec2 read only in the policies in the iam policies i am searching with ec2 read only something like this let me type enter in the search box i typed 
press enter i have one policy ec2 read only access type is aws managed is this policy pre created for us by aws yeah now if i see this policy if you see here effect allow action ec2 colon describe star describe star if you see only describe describe like that so since it is only describe ec2 describe load balancing describe cloud watch describe auto scaling describe only describe which means whoever has this policy will they able to create update delete EC2 instances or load balancers or auto scaling groups? No. They can do maximum only read. They can see. Suppose similarly we have a EC2 full access. EC2 full access. Full access. This is also pre configured by AWS. Now if you see here action EC2 colon star. EC2 colon star. CloudWatch colon star. Like this, they have given a star, auto scaling star. What is the meaning of star here? Action, kind of a permission, EC2 colon star, which means is all the permissions on EC2, like create, update, delete, like that. If this policy is attached to someone, will they able to create, update, delete EC2 instances and load balancers and also auto scaling groups? like this yes now there is a one more policy called admin admin administrator administrator access this policy if you see this policy resource also star resource also star action also star resource in the sense aws resource like ec2 elb vpc iam s3 Resource also star, action also star. If someone is attached with this policy, whether it's a user or whether it, this is attached to group, will they become administrators in AWS? They can do everything, they can manage everything here. This is policy. This is AWS managed policy. If required, can I create my own policy also? Like this, customer managed policies. Like this. I can create a policy, click on this create policy, click on this create policy. For which service you want to you know, create this policy? I can say, suppose if I want to create this policy for let's say EKS service, I can select this one. And what permissions? Whether you want to give all the permissions or whether you want to give read only permissions like re read and list only read only like this you can create a policy like this you can create a policy like this one second so here again which resource again i have lot of kubernetes clusters i have lot of kubernetes cluster if i select this one is this policy applicable for all these Kubernetes clusters in this account? If I have a lot of Kubernetes clusters, let's say, this policy is applicable for all. If required, can I give that ARN concept? If you remember ARN, when we were discussing about S3, can I use that ARN to grant access to specific resource again? Not all the Kubernetes resources, specific resource. I can use that ARN concept here. If I want to grant for all the Kubernetes clusters, I can select like this. Then you can review, you can give some name like this EKS, read only something like this, some policy, your own. You can create a policy like this. Now, if I attach this policy to someone, will they able to access all the Kubernetes clusters, EKS clusters in this account? Read only one, read only. 
read only that is what we have given here right if you see e case list 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 describe only read only so if i attach this policy to someone will they able to access my cube you know the kubernetes clusters only read only but will they able to create update delete kubernetes clusters in this account who attach this policy no so these are like a customer managed will you able to create your own policies also if required like this yes these are policies is everyone clear what is iam policy again managed aws managed and customer managed policy is nothing but specific permissions to specific aws resource like this now users there are two types of users iam users and uh, identity provider user if your aws account is already integrated with iam uh, sorry this identity provider will you able to use your own username and password to log into that yes and uh, you have you are part of some group you are part of some group if that group is attached with these policies will you able to access these aws resources as per the policies attached to that group which you belongs to yes now i don't have identity provider let me create a user iam user on the fly in aws itself can i create iam user the way you created users in jenkins similarly here so let me delete these existing users i'll create again from beginning guys in the companies you might be already aware uh, maybe if you are already working do you have a team who manages this ldap or active directory also we call them as a ldap administrators we call them as a ldap administrators or active directory administrators they are responsible for managing that ldap if any new employees are joining are they responsible for creating entries in that ldap for that user that new employee yes now i don't have any ldap so i am demonstrating on the fly here iam users if required can i create a user here if required can i create a groups here also like this devops group development group like this let me delete these groups also let me delete these groups also i am deleting these groups now i can delete the groups i can create a group also here now let me create a group like this i am creating a group like this let me create a group like this devops group i am creating a group like this while creating a group can i attach policies to that group for this group devops group can i attach policies whatever policies let's say ec2 full access ec2 full access i am typing that i am selecting that one again i am clicking on this clear button like this can i give ec2 full access s3 full access based on the requirement based on the requirement for that group can i give access vpc full access like this based on the requirement everything is based on the requirement right everything is based on the requirement based on the requirement you will create a group now i have given ec2 full access s3 full access vpc full access now with that policies i am creating a group i am creating a group whoever users whatever users part of this group will they have same access level like ec2 full access s3 full access and vpc full access yes now similarly let me create another group let me create another group let me create another group let's say development group 
development group like this now for development group the requirement came to you for development group you should not give full access let's say they are asking you to give only ec2 full access or oh, sorry ec2 read only guys again who is going to create these policies permissions if you are part of aws administration team if you are part of aws administration team if you are part of aws infrastructure team or administration team you are going to do that if you are not part of infrastructure team or admin team this aws admin team you are only responsible for creating pipelines jenkins managing those pipelines creating and deploying in dockers or kubernetes who is going to do this in the background for anyone who is working on that project the aws admins or aws infrastructure team if you are part of infrastructure team then do you need to know what is policy what is group what is user how we can create permissions how we can grant permissions to the team or individual user if required yes now the requirement came to me i am creating a group like this with this ec2 read only access for this developers like s3 read only access for like this i am selecting vpc read only based on the requirement suppose the for this development group you need access to the lambda also or you need access to the ecr ecr is one service elastic container registry if required can you grant that one also one second this is container registry ec2 container registry like this read only or full if it is read only access they can just pull the docker images from this registry will they able to push the images to this registry if it is only read only access no based on the requirement you can grant the permissions for now i created a development group with three policies for now i created development group with three policies permissions these permissions at any point of time also even though you created a group at any point of time also will you able to you know update the permissions policies for that group at any point of time if you want to add or delete some additional policies yes if required can we add users to this group if i have any users whether that users are from iam if the users are integrated ldap is integrated will i able to see that users also here if the ldap is integrated will i able to see those users also here yes but as of now i don't have any users from ldap because i have not integrated with ldap and also did i created any users in this iam iam users aws users no now let me create a user let me create a user this is iam user this is iam user i am creating a user like this mithun at a time also you can add multiple users now i am creating one user at a time mithun access type there are two types here programmatic access and console access what is the meaning of console access what is the meaning of programmatic access this access type we have a console access we have a programmatic access what is the meaning of console access gui gui aws can be managed using gui also so what is this whatever i am doing here is it via programmatic or is it via console whatever i am doing whatever i am doing that is console same thing if required can i do it using console also like creating ec2 creating iam users groups permissions also is it possible for me to do using programmatically also yes that is programmatic access programmatic access what is the meaning of programmatic access like cli api sdk api application programming interface cli command line interface sdk like boto boto scripts 
you can do that way also now if it is a console access how we will authenticate if it is a console access how we will authenticate with aws if it is a console access we will use what username and username and password if it is a programmatic access whether if you want to use cli or if you want to use api if you want to use sdk etc what do we use here programmatic access we are going to use access key and secret key secret keys access keys and secret keys concept now i am not granting let's say programmatic access i am not granting this programmatic access for this user will he able to programmatically manage aws that can be creation or seeing what is there updating or deleting no for now let me select both programmatic access and console access so this one for the first time you can you know you can choose this auto generate of password to log into the console this auto generation of password or if you can set some default password it should have some special characters if i just give like this it is not it is saying the password does not conform to the password policies it must contain at least eight characters include minimum three of the following mixed characters like upper case lower case and numbers with special characters so if i am giving like this is this password is matching with the password policy it should have eight characters first that is not there even though i give eight characters it is not having upper case lower case and numbers and special characters so let me give something like this this is default password something like this is this password matched with that password policy eight characters one upper case i have two upper cases and lower case numbers and special characters like this now this one user must create a new password when the user log in for the first time when this user log into the aws for the first time this user must change this password this is kind of a default password now i am creating a user permissions for this user we have permissions like this three options while creating a user can i add this user to the group i already have some group like development group devops group i can add to this groups again can one user part of multiple groups guys yes it's one user can be part of multiple groups now i can add this user to this group otherwise can i directly attach policies to the users directly without adding the user to the group can i attach permissions to the users by selecting this option by selecting this option i can attach policies directly to that user but if i have a thousands of users hundreds of users is it a feasible or is it possible to manage permissions to users independently like this no instead of that can i go for this option groups groups is attached with permissions now i am adding this uh, i am adding this mithun user to the devops group so devops group has some policies does mithun will be able to perform those operations as per the policies attached to this group in the aws yes now i am creating a user let me download this access key and secret key we are going to demonstrate cli also i am going to download this access key and secret key you can download as a csv file or you can make a note of this access key for this user this is a mithun user access key and this is complete from here to here this is secret key now for you can you can download and keep it you can use this for a reference now if you don't have a root user if you want to access using normal user iam user you can use this link you can use this link 
using this link you can access that aws account using this link that user can access i created one user like this now similarly i'll create one more user just for demonstrating i'll create one more user i'll create one more user balaji user let's say for balaji user also i want to grant both let me set the default password i set some default password user must log in uh, change this default password when he is logging for the next time and i am adding this user to this group now balaji belongs to development group development group has some permissions like a read only permissions read only ec2 read only s3 read only vpc so does balaji will be able to create update delete servers or vpcs or s3 buckets will he able to create delete s3 buckets like that no let me create a user and also let me download this balaji user access key and secret key because i am going to demonstrate cli also so this is download the csv file or you can make a note of this one this is balaji user access key this is balaji user secret key guys now if you share this access key and secret keys with someone who is not belongs to your company also by installing aws cli in their laptop by using this access key and secret keys will they able to manage everything if this user has a permissions suppose i am sharing this uh, access keys and secret keys with you you are not part of the company i am aws admin i am aws admin i have full permissions by mistake i have shared this access keys and secret keys with someone who belongs who is not belongs to our company itself will they able to use this access keys and secret keys will they able to programmatically delete every infrastructure whatever you have if this user has a admin access so that's why is it recommended to maintain this kind of a confidential informations in the version control system like git github even though you are using git github is it recommended to maintain these confidential informations in the version control systems no we call that as a misconfigurations we call these things as a misconfigurations do you need to follow all the best practices aws is offering all all the things but you need to carefully manage all these things you need to follow all the best practices you not uh, you should not do the misconfigurations you should not do the security misconfigurations now this is my access key and secret key for now i am going to use in some time same you can access using this one now let me play a different role now now i am balaji i am balaji this is my laptop now i am going to play kind of a apache to do role now multi disaster you know what is that multi personality disorder something like that now i am balaji let's say now this is my system i go to my system i'll open a private window because here i logged in as a root user so uh, let me open a private window so i am balaji now i am typing this aws console i open a private window is balaji will be provided with root credentials the moment he join in the company no but if this aws is already integrated with iam i mean to say ldap he has to select that iam user here when i am directly accessing like this do i need to provide account id here when i am using this iam user do i need to provide account id this iam user can be ldap user this iam user can be ldap user or directly in the aws iam now account id does every aws account will have its own id for root users that is not required 
because for every aws account how many root users will be there for every aws account how many root users will be there only one but no one will use root credentials no one will use root credentials iam now here do i need to provide account id whatever account id for my company aws has given one account id that id i have to provide suppose if i have a url like this that account id is also part of this url itself if i open this url this account id will be pre populated in this field yes otherwise do i need to manually give this account id do i need to manually give this account id and click on next yes otherwise if i have like this url if i am opening that in the browser is that account id will be pre populated in that input box now if you see is that account id is pre populated here now username if it is already integrated with uh, ldap can you use your employee id if this is your employee id and uh, this is integrated with ldap can you use your employee id or whatever username you are using for system yes but for now is it integrated with any ldap this account will i get something like this incorrect so let me use this one i am trying to log in as a mithun user now the default password devops at the rate 2022 now since the policy was to change the password for the first time is it prompting for that user to change the password for the first time give your old password whatever that is and type your new password and confirm uh, let me change you cannot give old and new as same I updated my one second. I think something is wrong. Let me type carefully. Yeah, my password is updated. I logged in for the first time as a Mithun now. Now Mithun belongs to some group. Mithun belongs to some group. Now I am in Mumbai region. Since Mithun has EC2 full access, will he able to see the servers, EC2 servers? Full access he has. If you see, will he able to see the servers here in Mumbai region, whatever region? I have some servers I can see here. If required, will he able to terminate the server or stop the server? Let's say this server. Will he able to stop or terminate this one if required? I am terminating that as a Mithun user. If you see, is it terminating that server? Yes, because he has an EC2 full access. If required, can he create a server also? If required, can he create a server also? Yes, he has EC2 full access. S3 full access also there. So will you able to create buckets or upload files to that buckets, whatever, because he has S3 full access. He can go to that S3 service. If required, he can delete bucket or if required, he can upload files to this bucket. Suppose I have some file, you know, bucket like this. Now, if required, will he able to delete the objects because S3 full access? Will he able to delete the objects from that bucket? Or if required, can he create a new bucket also? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. Now, VPC also full access. But this user doesn't have this IAM. If he go to IAM, Will he able to see users, groups, policies, all those things? If this user goes to IAM, 
so what does it mean what does it mean the moment this guy goes to iam what does it mean this read only permissions also do we have read only permissions also for this user for iam no so it is saying you do not have permission required to perform this operation ask your administrator to add the permission if you want to see users or groups do do they need to add these respective permissions whatever it is saying if the admins added these permissions then only he can see so he is able to see anything here users group policies so if this user has to see at least policies for this user do we need to add these permissions like iam list policies iam is a service list policy is a per, you know action kind of a permission for iam if we grant list policies to that user then does that user can see the policies only see the policies will be able to update or create or delete any policies if this is only attached no like this if we go to any service like ecr elastic container registry elastic container registry does this user has that read only permissions also at least to see how many images are there in this ecr if he goes to this one let me click and get started let me cancel this now if required we don't have any repositories if you see here by clicking on this create repository i am saying something like this what is it what does it mean guys why he is not able to create any repositories here because is this user has permissions to create any repositories no like this we are managing the permissions now similarly let me play let me play another role now now i am balaji let me open another private window because in the same private window if i try to open again it will be with same user so let me open one more private window now i am logging in with balaji credentials let's say balaji credentials for the aws account now i am balaji the default password i am using here for the first time i am changing the password i am changing the password for the first time now balaji belongs to development group so balaji doesn't have ec to full access now if you see does balaji will be able to at least stop the server forget about creating or terminating will i able to stop any server here let me select this server let me select this server will i able to stop the server because i have only read only access am i able to stop as a balaji what does it mean what it is trying to say here it is not disabled stop button is there it is not like disable you don't have a permissions you are not authorized you are authenticated because you are a valid user authentication is successful but do i have authorization permissions to do this stopping the server terminating if i click on this terminate server also am i going to get error like this you don't have the permissions now if required if i need permissions do i need a you know do i need to raise a request with some team who is managing permissions for this aws do i need to raise a request with the you know them saying that i am part of so and so team i am part of so and so team i need permissions i need permissions to these resources can you please grant required permissions then request goes to a manager approval if manager approves then does that admin request goes to your manager approval because manager has to approve that yes he belongs to so and so team he need a permissions once that approval is done 
does aws admins will go and grant the permissions in that respective tools yes this is how it happens in the real time now you cannot upload any files to s3 also because what is the current permission for s3 for this user this user belongs to development group so it is read only permissions now he can see the buckets he can see the buckets he can download the files also because read only he can download the files also like this but uh, will he able to upload any file now i am trying to add some files as a biology let's say the moment i click on upload right here it is saying upload failed upload failed why it is failed what could be the reason here you can see what could be the reason what is the reason for fail access denied access denied 403 status code what is the meaning of 403 http status code 403 what is the status code of 403 that forbidden so is aws is responding with 403 saying that you don't have a permissions you don't have enough permissions to do that so that is what happening now if i required can i request admin that aws admin so if aws admin let me open this iam as a aws admin this is root user but again admins also will not use root users but here let me use so this user will be able to grant permissions to balaji now i mean to say to the develop balaji belongs to this development group for this development group if the admin has given s3 full access so this balaji belongs to this group he can directly add permissions to the group or at a user level also will be able to add not not for group but for this user alone will be able to again give s3 full access not to the complete group if required yes suppose here add permissions for that user right i can directly attach the policies for that user now let's say for that user i given s3 full access for that user level i am adding full access s3 full access to that user few permissions are from you know coming from group now i added some permissions directly to this user this balaji user now balaji user will be able to do this operation now that s3 let me go to this uh, s3 as a balaji user now here this is failed this is failed now let me close but this time again i am trying to upload again any file like this let me click on this upload now if you see since the admin has granted permissions do you see he is able to successfully upload so is everyone clear what is iam what is policy what is user what is group how it works right now programmatic access what is the meaning of programmatic access whatever we have done so far it is what type of access we have done we used gui console now programmatically also like cli or api or sdk sdk and other developmental tools and other developmental tools like terraform cloud formation other developmental tools like terraform or cloud formation templates aws specific will i able to manage aws resources programmatically also 
using CLI, API, SDK. SDK is like a Boto script. Boto. Now, as a Balaji or as a Mithun, can I install AWS CLI in my laptop? Can I use my access keys and secret keys to authenticate and do something programmatically using CLI? So as a Balaji, as a Mithun, will I able to use AWS CLI? Can I install AWS CLI in my laptop? And can I manage AWS resources? Yes, let's do that now. Now, AWS CLI, can we install AWS CLI in any operating system? As you know, AWS CLI can be installed in any OS, which means can I install in Windows laptop or Windows server? Can I install in Linux? Can I install in Mac? Yes. Now, my local laptop, let me come out of this. This is my local laptop terminal. This is my local laptop terminal. In your Windows laptop, you have a CMD, that uh, command prompt. In your Windows laptop, do you have a command prompt? Here I call, you know, here I can call it as a terminal. You have a command prompt. Now, I already installed AWS CLI here. In this my local laptop, I already installed AWS CLI. If you see, what version of AWS CLI is already installed in my laptop? AWS CLI 1.x, 1.16. If required, can you install AWS CLI? If it is not there, install AWS CLI in any system. In any system. Using this uh, official website, right? It can be installed in Linux. It can be installed in Windows. Let me minimize this. It can be installed in Linux. It can be installed in Mac. It can be installed in Windows. The what is the current uh, version of AWS CLI? It is 2, 2.x, 2 2.x, 2 2.x. 2 so what is prerequisite for installing AWS CLI? Basically Python. Python is required for AWS CLI to be installed. But uh, do I need to explicitly install Python or this MSI file? If you are using this MSI file to install in AWS, uh, this AWS CLI, the Python comes with this one also. You no need to explicitly explicitly install. If you are using Windows laptop, you can download this uh, software, AWS CLI, MSI file. What is that MSI stands for? What is that MSI stands for? Microsoft Installer. Microsoft Installer. So. You can download. You can download that MSI file directly. If you click on that link, I pinged you in the chat box. If you click on that link, does one file will be downloaded to your laptop, your desktop, whatever it is. If I click on this link, kind of this MSI file will be downloaded. Then if you just need to double click on that one, click on next, 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 next. Does AWS CLI will be installed in your laptop or desktop? Yes. Once AWS CLI is installed, by executing this AWS iPhone iPhone version command in your command prompt, will you be able to see AWS CLI is installed or not? Whether it is 2.x or 1.x, you can see. Now I already installed. If required, if I want to install in Mac, can I download this one? PKJ, you know, PKJ file. This Mac packages. I can download and install. For Mac. If it is a Linux system, can I download that AWS CLI as a zip file like this? Can I 
uh, you know extract that zip file can i execute these three commands if i want to install aws cli in linux machine yes now i already installed if i just installed aws cli that can be your laptop or that can be your server does it mean will i able to communicate i am executing this aws s3 ls command so aws s3 aws is a command s3 is a service name ls is option so what this command does aws s3 ls will it show list of s3 buckets available guys don't uh, by heart any command if you don't know commands will you able to see this help command like aws help command you can execute it will show aws help command and what are the options right options for that help command so aws s3 aws s3 is one more command let me press q aws s3 help if you need aws s3 help you can execute like this aws s3 this s3 to manage s3 we can use this s3 and these are the options i can use aws s3 ls what this ls does you can see the description what that ls does also here that ls will display the buckets like if i want to remove bucket rb if i want to create bucket mb these are the options don't by heart don't remember also if you don't know will i able to go to aws s3 documentation also aws s3 cli commands i can search and i can use i can go to this aws the official documentation also i can see what is this means what is this means with some examples also i can see this is not important but in the background how this is working is important without knowing that what is aws what is s3 how permissions are managed what is policies what is groups if you don't know all these things if you just by heart this one nothing will help i don't remember all these things i i focus only on the concepts not on the implementation if you know the concept will you able to implement whatever requirement came for you i learn that way i don't focus on the implementation when i am learning any tool i will focus on the concept if you know the concept as per your requirement will you able to implement anything whether it's a aws whether it's a jenkins whether it's a github or whatever it is if you know the concept implementation will be easy but if you by heart implementation if you by heart implementation if you get any new requirement will you able to do that for that new requirement if you by heart implementation any new requirement comes to you on the same tool you cannot implement but if you are good at basics if you are good at the concept then will you able to implement as per the given requirement by following that concepts yes so i learn that way i focus that way so i don't remember all these commands it is very difficult for me to remember also but i know what is s3 how s3 can be accessed managed permissions then i can focus that way now i just install aws cli does it mean i am able to see the s3 buckets am i able to see this s3 buckets or anything if i just install aws cli no what required do i need to configure my aws cli do i need to configure my aws cli what is the meaning of configuring does aws cli requires your access keys and secret keys for authentication and authorization credentials so i can configure like this aws configure aws configure is one command i can configure like this is it asking me to provide my access key now let's say let me use let me use balaji access key and secret key if you have noted otherwise you already downloaded csv file that uh, keys file let me go to that one i can take from there also so these keys 
I download it, right? So this is which user? Mithun user. Mithun user access key. This is access key. From here to here, it is secret key. This is Mithun user. Similarly, let me open. one more that is this one that is balaji user access key and secret key now i am using this balaji user access key this is access key type press enter secret key from here to here this is secret key paste and type enter now region this AWS CLI has to point to which region by default. Suppose your infrastructure is in Mumbai region. Can I say Mumbai as a default region? But uh, is it like this? Is it like this? No. It in AWS terminology. AP iPhone one South iPhone one. If you wrongly type this one, CLI will not work. If you wrongly type this one, CLI will not work. Because the CLI is going to make API calls in the background. You are executing a command, but in the background, is it communicating with that API offered by AWS? That CLI is making a API calls in the background. You are using CLI, but CLI is going to make API calls in the background. Don't wrongly type this one. Make sure you have given a correct region name. Then preferred output format in which format you want to see it supports three formats text format table format and json format text format table format and json format if i say json the output output will be shown in the json format now i configured balaji access key balaji has a s3 access now do you see is he able to see how many buckets are there in that account now now within these buckets what are the files again something like this aws s3 that bucket name you need to give again aws s3 ls s3 colon forward slashes that bucket name if i execute like this can i see how many objects are there in that bucket this is one object this is another object this is another object now Balaji user has a full access. If you remember, did I attached full access to the Balaji user S3 full access? Now, will he able to download or upload files? Upload files also? Yes. If he has to upload files to S3, do we need to mount S3 from this system? The way we have mounted, the way we have mounted EBS and EFS, do I need to mount S3 from here, this system? No right not required now using console using gui using gui was i able to already upload files to the s3 bucket using gui also yes using cli also will using cli also will i able to copy files if i have a permissions let's say in this current folder let's say in that current folder in that current folder I have this file, let's say. I have this file, let's say. Using this AWS S3 CP command. What is the meaning of CP? Copy. This file, this file I want to copy from my local laptop. I want to copy this file to this S3 bucket. If I have a permissions, does AWS will allow me to copy the file? from my local laptop this file to this s3 bucket now if i have a permissions let me type enter if you see is it trying to copy that file from my local laptop this is file in my local laptop i am trying to upload to s3 if i don't have a permissions let's say aws admin now i can see that file i can see that file here I can see that file here. If you see, is that file uploaded to S3, this file? Now, now let's say the AWS admin, 
the aws admin the guy who is managing permissions for the team let's say this admin is remove these permissions for this balaji user let's say for this balaji user add permissions is remove those permissions for this balaji user for this balaji user let's say permissions now he is removing these permissions he has removed this s3 full access for that balaji user he has removed that permissions from balaji now will he able to upload now any file that can be same file or that can be different file will he able to upload same file or different file will he able to copy now what is the meaning of this one now no permission now suppose i have a jenkins server i have a jenkins server from jenkins server jenkins pipeline can i have this type of cli commands also to upload or download files from jenkins workspace to s3 buckets if required can i have some command like this in my jenkins pipeline also something like this if this file has part of my jenkins workspace let's say if this file is part of my jenkins workspace let's say will i able to copy file from jenkins server to s3 bucket if required but uh, do we need to authenticate or do we need to authorize with aws that jenkins server in that jenkins server do i need to have a aws cli installed and configured if that permission is there then it will allow suppose sometimes in the pipelines you are getting these type of errors suppose in the pipelines you are getting these type of errors let's say in that case do you need to consider that the jenkins system doesn't have permissions to upload or download file you know upload not download jenkins doesn't have permissions to upload files to s3 in that case do you need to grant a permissions do you need to grant permissions to that jenkins server any permission based on that requirement so this type of things only we will do this type of things only you will do nothing called real time everything is a requirement based on the requirement you need to implement that one now since that user doesn't have he is not able to upload suppose download suppose he has to download this file maybe this var file or this this jpg to this system same command but reverse same command but reverse now this is source this is source at the end destination if i am just giving like this to the current folder in this system to the current folder in this system will it able to download from s3 current folder because i have not given full path current directory in this system is it going to download because it has read only access it has read only access if the read only access also not there will it able to download no now this user doesn't have ec2 terminating the policies i mean to say terminate servers now we can see like this aws ec2 describe instances which means will i able to see how many instances are there by executing this command you can see describe instances i can see some server details guys don't remember any command i don't remember i'll go to the official website aws ec2 cli commands now i can go to this now we have some something like this describe instances create instances using this aws ec2 create instance if required can i create a server also using cli if i have a permission if i have a permission now describe this describe 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 instances we have something like this describe instances this command can i use this command like this 
options also they are giving like aws ec2 describe instances some examples i can see instances like this if required can i apply filters also suppose i want to see only m file or you know m file dot large can i apply something like this iphone iphone filter instance type m file dot large now do i have any instance of that type do i have any instance of that type instance type no now let me say value t2 dot micro or t2 dot large t2 dot medium i have one t2 dot medium server am i able to see only the t2 dot medium server details here describe is it giving that server details all the server details if required can i get only specific fields suppose i want to see only in which availability zone it is there or the status whether it is running or stopped the state can i get that only those fields also if required filters also can be used along with filters along with filters you can see whatever is required something like this whatever is required you can apply the queries also like instance id subnet id if you want to see you can apply like this also this escaping character if i type like this am i able to see only that instance ids and subnet ids how many instances are there what is that instance id what is that subnet id this is how cli works this is how cli works one more last thing which is left as a balaji user he doesn't have full access will he able to terminate there is a command called aws ec2 aws ec2 terminate instance there is one more command called aws ec2 terminate instance terminating instances if required he can terminate but will he able to terminate with that instance id will he able to terminate now let's say i am using this instance id i want to terminate this instance let's say will he able to terminate now as a balaji user no but if the same command is executed as a mithun user if i configure aws ec2 with mithun access key and secret key will he able to terminate yes now one more important thing here is what is left guys one more important thing here it is left roles we discussed about policies we discussed about group we discussed about users what is this role where can i use this role roles can be used to grant permission permissions to aws resources to manage aws resources which means i have one ec2 instance from that ec2 instance i should be able to manage i have one ec2 instance from that ec2 instance i want to manage aws resources which one is better option here do i need to use that user concept this is my local laptop so i cannot attach a role this is my local laptop i cannot attach a role can i use user concept here because this is my laptop my system so can i use my credentials my user access keys and secret keys here yes now let's say i have a jenkins server i already have a jenkins server let's say this is my jenkins server let's consider this is jenkins server i want to run terraform script or i want to run s3 or ec2 commands or i want to run terraform script does that server requires permissions to create those resources suppose this is my jenkins server from jenkins i am running some s3 aws cli commands or from jenkins i am running some terraform scripts does that jenkins server requires authentication and authorization with aws to create those resources or manage those resources yes in that case let's say 
let's consider this is your jenkins server let's consider this is your jenkins server you have installed jenkins you are trying to run some terraform scripts you have terraform scripts but if you execute terraform scripts will it able to create a servers by installing terraform if you run the scripts will it able to create a resources from that server if i have some terraform script will i able to run that script without permissions if i just install terraform cli if i execute script no do we need permissions for that server so how can i manage access again is it recommended to use user concept with this resources because this is already aws resource can i attach roles to this aws resources to grant permissions yes now let me connect to this server let's say five minutes guys i'll wrap up we are almost done now here let's consider this is my jenkins server can i install jenkins cli as a jenkins user or, a, or any other user if required in that system can i install gen you know aws cli in that jenkins server aws cli so i am installing aws cli in that linux machine by following these documents by following these instructions i am downloading that aws cli i am extracting that Unzip software is not there. Unzip software is not there. Let me install. Now, let me extract that zip file. This command, let me execute. AWS CLI is installed now in this machine. This is already one service in AWS. Now, from here, let's say, I'm executing something like this. If I just install AWS CLI in this EC2 instance, let's say, will I have a permissions to see again like this? No. What needs to be done here? There are two things here, user concept and role concept. Is it recommended to use user concept here? Because is this system, is your laptop or your desktop no it is not recommended to grant permissions via user because it is not a user right this is a system this is not your laptop as a devops engineer or a developer laptop or developer system it is not recommended to use access keys and secret keys of user this is al already a separate server aws server so can i use role concept here can i create a role with required policies and attach that role to the server role concept so let me go to iam as an admin let me go to iam as an admin here roles roles i already created a lot of roles i already created a lot of roles let me create a new role just for demonstrating i am creating a role like this this role for which service you need to use whether this role you want to attach with ec2 whether you want to attach with the lambda or whether you want to attach with any other service in aws like eks for which service you want to attach this role my my current requirement i am creating a role i want to attach this role to which one whether i want to attach with ec2 whether i want to attach with lambda or rds or eks my current requirement I want to attach with which one EC2. I want to attach with EC2. Guys, this is for which service you are attaching, not for which service you are granting. Which service you are attaching, not which service you are granting. So for which service you want to attach EC2. I am selecting, I want to attach this role. Whatever role I am creating, I want to use this role with EC2. I want to attach this role with EC2. While creating a role, again, can I attach policies like S3 full access, EC2 full access, like this? 
S3 full access. I can attach like this. I, if I attach only S3 full access now for this role, I am attaching S3 full access. With that, let me create a role. Now, can I attach this role? Let me give like S3 full access like this. I am creating a role with that policies. Now, can I attach this role to that EC2 instance? Let me go back to EC2 instance. This role is still getting created. Huh? Okay. Now let me go to EC2. Now can I attach that role to that EC2 instance? Whatever EC2 instance which I want to attach, that can be Jenkins server or any other server. I will select this server. Go to Actions. Security. Security. Modify IAM role. Now can I attach whatever role? This S3 full access. I have created one role if you remember just now. S3 full access. I am attaching that role. Now, is that server now have permissions based on the policies attached to that role and that role is attached to the server? So does this server will get AWS permissions based on the role which is attached to that server? and based on the policies which is attached to that role. Now, is your keys needs to be used here with this server? Do you need to use your access keys and secret keys because this is already a service? But uh, for my local laptop or any other system which is not AWS service, can I use role concept? Can I use role concept from the system which is or from the server which is not any AWS service? No. So here we can use ro you know, role because this is already easy to. Now we attached only S3 full access. Will you able to see these servers? EC2 instances will you able to describe from this? Like this because we attached only S3 full access. Will you able to describe instances from that system? Does these commands will work? If I execute something like this. Something like this. Anything. One second. Uh, something is not copied correctly. Let me copy correctly. Now, am I getting permission denied for describe also? Am I getting permission denied from this system? Because is that role attached with that policy, EC2 policies, whatever role I attach to this server? For this server, did I attach this IAM role for this server? I attach this IAM role. That IAM role is attached with that policies, EC2 related policies. Whether you are using AWS CLI, whether you are using Boto, or whether you are running Terraform script, using Terraform script, you want to create a server. Will that work from that server? Unless until you have policies attached to that server? No. I can attach policies like this admin access admin access but uh, is it recommended to give elevated access is it a best practice to give elevated access elevated in the sense everything it is not a best practice unless until it is required unless until it is required unless until it is required it is not recommended to give this elevated access or full access Suppose I have given elevated access to this system. If someone has SSH access to that system or you are running via pipeline, if you execute some script in pipeline or you SSH to that server and execute some commands, will you be able to destroy all the infrastructure intentionally or unintentionally also? Intentionally you can terminate, you know, terminate or you know, unintentionally also you can terminate. 
but if that server has only required permissions not elevated access even though you are intentionally or un unintentionally you are trying to execute some script is it going to terminate if that server doesn't have a permissions no is everyone clear actually this much is required if you are working as an aws admin but i try to cover in and out of this iam so that you can understand how it works if this type of errors comes what is the problem how we can resolve that problem so that you can understand in the actual project is everyone clear guys what is iam and how it works and what is aws cli what is aws cli how can we manage and someone was asking sir from ec2 how can i access s3 now i have a aws cli or api now will i able to download upload files from aws s3 to this ec2 instance directly without mounting also using cli or using apis also now let's say i have this bucket in this bucket i have some files using aws cli or apis will i able to download and upload now this file i want to download let's say if this has a permissions if this has a permissions am i able to download that file from s3 to my ec instance it is not ls it is not ls what is the option cp now am i able to download that file from s3 bucket to this location current directory now can i have these type of commands also from pipeline jenkins pipeline if your jenkins server has a permissions it can upload or download by using gui not possible i have already done using gui also many times right this is gui this is gui not your jenkins gui jenkins gui use only to manage jenkins stuff using jenkins gui will you able to create update delete ec2 instances are you thinking that way jenkins gui is only for jenkins this is aws gui so from aws gui can i do this this aws gui only users the systems our applications will use aws gui like jenkins is one software does jenkins software will use gui to create anything in aws is it possible no only programmatic but users like a developers devops guys our admins can they able to use this gui with their credentials that is gui hope everyone is clear thank you guys that's it for today that's it for aws from here tomorrow i'll continue with uh, docker but i extended too much today just to cover this uh, aws iam in detail so i try to stretch some time hope that is not a problem for you we'll continue tomorrow with the docker thank you guys i'm stopping the session here we'll continue tomorrow from docker